I'm Elaine from Strom and Tess, and today we're going to talk a little bit about the GMAT. One of the question types that everyone struggles with, whether you're a math person or not, is data sufficiency. The reason these questions seem so hard is because they're not actually asking you to solve a problem, rather just to figure out if you can solve the problem. Now most of us grew up taking tests in school where you have to do a little bit of work, get a concrete answer, and you're done. So we're not really used to this type of thing. But if you can wrap your brain around the fact that you don't necessarily have to do that work, rather just figure out whether or not you can solve the problem, then you're leaps and bounds in front of everyone else taking the GMAT who won't be nearly so efficient. The other thing that most people don't know is that there are only two types of questions on data sufficiency. The first is what we call a one value question. As its name implies, this question is asking if you can figure out just one value for the answer. These questions might look like, what is the value of x? Or, how many games did Team Z win? A sufficient answer would be something like, Team Z won three games. That is just one value, you're done. That means the information given was sufficient to find just one value for an answer. Now, if the information given leads you to an answer like, Team Z might have won three games, but they might have won seven games, that information is not sufficient to answer the question. The other question type on data sufficiency is what we call a definitely or definitely not question. These might look like, is x greater than 1? Or, is y an integer? Here we're looking for an answer like, yes, x is definitely greater than 1. Or, no, y is definitely not an integer. Either one of these answers means the information given was sufficient to answer the question. But if you get something like, x might be greater than 1, but it also might be less than 1, that means the information given was not sufficient to answer the question, because you don't have a definite answer. Understanding the difference between these two question types is the key to unlocking data sufficiency on the GMAT. Now, obviously, this brief tutorial doesn't cover everything about the GMAT, or even data sufficiency in particular, but hopefully it gave you a little bit of insight to how you can approach these questions strategically please feel free to check out our website or call for more information about private tutoring.